must have just been the valve not being all the way around. <laughs> Although I did just notice uh, when I was looking for the source of that rattle, I had a look under at this exhaust and noticed that it's like a crack there. Can you guys see that? So this rear section's all new. So we've got that put on. That's an X-Force Varix adjustable muffler. And that's what was rattling before, but the exhaust is a, a combination, I guess you could call. So I fitted the resonator. This rear section was done and the rest was on the car when I got it. So not good. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to fit up the rest of my BC coilovers on my S15. For those of you who haven't been following along so far, we've sort of done this in a bit of an unusual uh, way. So at the moment, Coilovers are installed on the front of the car and we've also got these orange wheels that are 17 by 9 plus 22 with 235-45-R17. And we fitted those up, borrowed those off a of mate just to test fit and we've been sort of having, I guess, uh, going the slow way about sizing up wheels correctly for this car. And I've still got my doubts about whether or not these are too aggressive for what I'm after. The fitment at the top is, is quite doable and I think we'll be fine, but obviously, there's a decent amount of camber on that wheel already, perhaps neg three, something like that. Uh, and you can just see how much of the wheel and tire is protruding out at the bottom. But yeah, it just, it does look a little stance boy maybe for what I'm after. And we are having quite a bit of contact, uh, particularly on the other side. I think it's not cambered as much. This side, the camber plates are fully adjusted. The other side is still on the factory. So with camber, it seems to fit. Um, but I'm still sort of umming and ahhing about whether I go out and buy my own wheels that are this exact size or whether we, I don't know. I, I've really been struggling if I'm honest. I'm already sweating. I haven't even started doing anything. It's uh, pretty muggy here today. We've sort of done it in a bit of an unusual way. We've had the front coilovers on and off now about three times, I think, maybe two. I'm sort of sick of taking them on and off and that's because they didn't fit with my standard wheels. So these are the standard wheels that I did have on the front. These are my wheels and the orange ones are my mates, but these are 18 by 8 plus 35, and they didn't clear the BC coilovers. The tire touched on the, I guess, the shock or the spring part of the BCs. So that's why we've got the orange ones on at the moment. These, because of the stretch tire and very slight um, more offset, they're, they've actually got a lot more offset, but it just makes a little bit more clearance on the inside with these wheels. So these ones clear, these ones don't. But the rear has currently still got the old shocks on it, so we're gonna fit up the BCs to the rear. There's no clearance issues at the back of this car, so that's what we're gonna to do today. That's why the front ones are fitted. We'll fit the rear ones up and get this thing handling and looking a bit better with a bit of reduced ride height. So if you do wanna know how to fit up coilovers to your S15 and you're wondering how to do the front section, I'll post a link uh, just in the top right, I think it is corner of the video so you guys can click on that but that's a video I did a couple of weeks ago on fitting up the front ones and today we're just going to go through the specifics or anything of note I guess with installing the rear. First steps to get the car on jack stands. So as you can see everything is stocked back here and we've just got these lowering springs, just like we had on the front. So these are king spring lowering springs. So to remove this stuff, it's a bolt here down the bottom. And then we just need to get access in. I think we need to remove maybe the rear seat and access the top here. So I have to pull down this rear seat. So you use the two tabs here, pull up at the same time. And it drops down like that. Oh, GBL bro. Look at this wiring nightmare back here. So from my research, we must remove the parcel tray. So, so mine just lifts up. So someone's obviously already been in here, but you can see there's these uh, little snaps. So I imagine normally yours will be bolted down. So you'll just have to pry it up. Um, the light's getting in the way, like this rear brake light is getting in the way of me being able to lift it further. So to remove the light, you just pull up on it and disconnect that one. So you can see that my wires are no longer connected to the plug. So someone has yanked this off and ripped the plug. I reckon I'll rip the wires uh, before and then they've just sort of twist tied them back together. So made removal for me easy, but yeah, just be careful when you take uh, the parcel shelf off or take this light off. Uh, that should let us lift the parcel shelf enough and maybe remove it. So I just sort of lift it and pull gently. 
So here's my fully six speakers that don't work. And then just down in here, you can see the top of the strut. So we'll undo that bolt there. And there's one more there. Undo those, the same on the other side. And that'll bring us back around to the only other bolt which is currently holding on the coil lever is this bottom one here. So this one's a 17 and if you've got a breaker bar, this is probably a great time to use it. So now we'll just try and remove it. Ow. So you want to just be careful, that smacked my hand. As you can see, it's moved up relative to the shock bolt. So just be careful, it, it smacked my hand here. Not too bad, but something to be aware of. At this point, congratulations, you've removed your old suspension and now it's time to fit up whatever you've bought that's nice and spicy and new. In our case, we've got some BCs in the rear. This box has been in my garage now for too long. Got a lukewarm tip for you guys. Especially for those of you that live in cold climates or snowy climates, you can see all these threads, particularly on this uh, rear shock here that are exposed. Obviously that's a, where you're gonna get corrosion. And for any of you who've had coilovers before, you know, you come to like lower your car and it's all rusted and these are all bound up and really hard to move, or same with the lock ring at the bottom. So I saw this online, you just get some, uh, this is electrical tape, but you can use basically any water resistant. I'm sure there's better stuff out there. But I'm just gonna tape the threads, particularly on this section here, so that when we do go to lower the car, maybe uh, in the future, Hopefully we won't have any corrosion here. Just, uh, I'm gonna call it a lukewarm tip because I'm not that sure how, how good it is. I think if you use the right stuff, it's really good. I've also seen some crazy solutions online where people like bag the whole coil over so that it basically looks like brand new, uh, which seems pretty smart to me, but yeah. Anyway, gonna give this a go. I've done the same on the front, so uh, time will tell. It'll either make it corrode faster or slower. Just to try and make the end a bit more obvious, I'm just going to fold this section so that it protrudes. Sort of like that, so that hopefully, when I come to adjust them in the future, uh, I'll be able to find this little tab and remove it without having to try and like cut all the rest of it off. So I was just looking to see which side is which and it's just got R there for rear. I believe these are universal, they can go on either side. It's just a reverse procedure, You've got the two bolts at the top, the one at the bottom, and uh, we should be done. Should be pretty easy. We'll slap those in. There it is. <laughs> just only very lightly, like just get one started and then you can put the other one on and get it started. But leave them like loose. Is that it? Yeah, I'll get you to help with the other side there if that's all right. Well, I cheated and got Bronte to help, but now we've just got to slightly raise, slightly jack this up and then slot this on. I just jacked it up a bit further till that base plate is all the way flush. Now we jump inside and we'll tighten these up. So the top nuts are 16 to 19 for the rear suspension and then down the bottom 98 to 118. Because my torque wrench uh, sort of starts off at 28 newton meters, I'm not going to use it for the top, I'm just going to do them at common sense sort of level, but we will use this one for down the bottom. I need to get a smaller one, but torque wrenches are pretty expensive. So it's all installed now. You can see our tape job in full effect. Sweet, so that's this side all done. We can go over and do the other side now. I'm not gonna show you that, but it's exact same, just over the other side. So now that both sides are all tight, the last thing we gotta do is just check that these collars are locked off. So included in the kit are these two C-spanners. been 
getting in the habit more and more of using my torque wrench. So it says uh, 98 to 118 is the standard torque. Job done. It looks pretty good. I'm, uh, it's, it's only lowered it like a, maybe another 10 mil, something like that, but it's made a difference. It actually looks like I need some camber arms now to push the camber back out because it's looking quite negative and with the wheels inside, it looks, um, looks a bit poxy, so. It's looking fairly sunken, as you can see. But clearance is actually pretty good, so. Definitely needs the, uh, an alignment, needs the camber dialed out a bit. And I think that's, it didn't look that bad before, but now it is, it's lowered. Probably like another 10 mil drop on what I had before. At the moment, it's all sort of messed up because the front, has quite a tall profile tire on it. 235, 45, 17 on the front. And I reckon the car is sort of uh, doing a bit of a mono. So this is not its final form. We are gonna continue to tinker with it, obviously, and uh, work out something in the way of wheels. I still don't know exactly what I'm gonna do. You see my gearbox leak, still evident. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the fitment up front, whether it's a bit too aggressive or not. I was thinking I'd get a 40 profile tire to make it look not so bulbous. Uh, but even then, it is quite wide. I don't think this side is maybe as prominent. But yeah, there's no real getting away. We can definitely tuck it in at the top, but as you can see, there's, uh, there's a lot of wheel and tire sticking out down the bottom. So I'll pop a little pole up in the in the corner, one of the corners, I can't remember which one it is. If you want to vote, let me know if you think this is a bit too aggressive fitment. Obviously, if we are going to run something this size, we're going to need to have a bit of stretch, like maybe 225, because I do want to be able to lower the car quite a bit. So you can fit those wheels and running at that height, we could easily make it work, but I'd like to get it a bit lower. The only thing left to do is the parcel, the parcel shelf reinstall, which in my case is really easy as all my clips were not connected or busted. So essentially I just need to pop it in there and reconnect that brake light. Uh, I'm not gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna leave it off just for now so that I can adjust the suspension uh, if I don't like how it feels. But yeah, it's obviously time for everyone to start mowing their lawns. So that's gonna be it for me, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, we finally got the car on suspension all round. It's taken a while and I'm sorry about that. I would do a test drive, but the car is currently semi in pieces. I'm doing some other jobs and projects at the moment that is not currently being videoed or is gonna come out later in a video. So it's currently out of action, otherwise I would take it for a test drive. I'm probably gonna run my motorbike to work this week. The car still drives. Obviously you saw me move it in the video, but I shouldn't be driving it. I don't know, you probably heard that nasty rattle, but yeah. I'll definitely give you guys a video on my sort of first impressions. We'll go for a drive in it and I'll let you know how they feel compared to standards. So subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss that video. Yeah, stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.